Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. There are several modifications of the abutment tooth that is involved with a removable partial denture over the fixed uh, bridge work. The abutment, first of all, in the area where there is to be an occlusal rest, should have adequate relief. Now the distal marginal ridge of this abutment tooth is to, be in, or is to have an occlusal rest, and we at many times have to over relieve in order to get the rest deep within the tooth. Now, not to jeopardize the pulp to any degree, but it should be, there should be adequate relief in the abutment tooth so that when the wax pattern is being fabricated, we do not penetrate or there is not a thin spot in the wax and thus a miscast. It also means that with uh, the rest deep within the tooth, it, it is less likely to become a potential occlusal interference. So this area or the area where there is to be an occlusal rest should be well relieved. Uh, any surface which in, the, uh, which in the survey shows that we must have a parallel surface or an altered guide plane will also have to be modified uh, to correspond with the survey. Now the lingual surface of this molar is to be parallel with the bicuspid on the opposite side of the arch. Now we have prepared uh, the tooth only with a chamfer, but if this tooth were tilted lingually, perhaps this axial surface would have to have a shoulder preparation so that when the crown is being waxed up, uh, there would not be a thin spot or a penetration. Another factor in the preparation is that we want to cover surfaces. We're perhaps less conservative in our preparation, particularly when the surface, such as this distal surface, is to have a minor connector covering it. In other words, if there were plaque accumulation under the minor connector, if we only left the margin halfway down the tooth, the distal surface of the tooth, in this area, if we were only go halfway down, then the margin of that preparation uh, would underlie the minor connector of the partial denture and it would be susceptible to recurrent decay. So we would also then, uh, we would be, be less conservative perhaps with surfaces that were involved with the partial denture framework. We would not want to leave a margin underlying the framework directly. The next thing uh, that is slightly different is that when we take the impression, the rubber base impression, for the abutment tooth, we would want to use a tray, a rubber base impression tray, that covers all of the arch, the entire arch, including, including the edentulous segment. Now this is necessary so that if we need to, to make a jaw relation record base to help us take the jaw relations, uh, we would have it on our master model. So when we make the tray, when we make the impression tray for taking the rubber base impression, it is necessary to cover the entire arch, including the retromolar pad areas whenever possible. In, it is also important that if the lingual area is to be very critical, if this lingual area, the height of the lingual area and the, the height at which the uh, tongue and frenum displaces uh, the tray, should be border molded if it, is, if it is to be involved with the partial denture framework. If the partial denture framework is to approach that area, this is also a good time to uh, check that height by muscle trimming the lingual area of this, of this uh, impression tray. 
Now the rubber base impression is taken identical to that of the crown and bridge model. Now this is the impression, this is the model that resulted from a rubber base impression of this arch. Now I'm looking at this and keeping in mind what the next step is and that is to get it mounted on the articulator so we can fabricate the gold crown. Now the first step is to mount the maxillary cast with a face bow and if there have been mouth changes or changes in the maxillary dentition such as improving centric stops and etc it is necessary to take uh, a new impression and mount that on the articulator. The, the diagnostic cast is no, which is mounted on the articulator is no longer valid. So we would have to take a new impression of the upper arch and mount it with a face bow. The second step then being to relate the mandibular arch to the maxillary arch and as we can see by preparing this tooth, by preparing the molar abutment, we have decreased our arch segment or this segment of the arch we have decreased the perimeter of that so that if it were once stable we are now not so sure if articulating the lower cast from the second bicuspid over to the first bicuspid will be stable against the maxillary arch either in a centric relation record or as what we're going to use here a centric occlusion by putting the teeth into maximum contact. So we want to increase this increase this arch perimeter and one way to do that is to use a bonnet bite. Now this is a bonnet which is made of Duralay. A Duralay the self the self curing acrylic, auto polymerizing acrylic and this may be made from the dye or could be made directly in the mouth. If it is understood that you have an enough occlusion uh, to, and you will not need a jaw relation record base, the same appointment that you take the impression, you can take the jaw, rela or the jaw relation on the bonnet if you're going to use centric occlusion and just soft, use the softened Duralay, put it in the mouth and let the patient close into it. However, when you have this edentula segment this large and the stability, the stability of the articulated cast is uh, in jeopardy, then we would want to use or make the bonnet off of the die. It, we won't be able to use the jaw relation record base that we used from the previous, uh, when we, previously when we mounted the diagnostic cast. So in addition to this bonnet, we will use a jaw relation record base. And this was illustrated in a previous tape. And the use of that will be identical. What we're going to show today is just how to add the soft Duralay to the top of this and to fabricate uh, the bonnet bite. And then we will put in an already fabricated centric occlusion bite. The bonnet. We'll put this uh, then into the mouth, the bonnet. And when the bonnet is made from, when the bonnet is made from the die, as it was here, it is obvious that you cannot take the bite record, the same appointment that you take the impression. It is necessary to temporize the patient and bring the patient back a second time. Now, if we look closely, at the bonnet, when it is made from the die, it can serve a twofold purpose. One is that we can use it to check the margins. If we fabricate that bonnet very carefully, we can check the accuracy of our die by checking the margins in the mouth. And this bonnet appears to be uh, very stable and accurate. So we can project that when our crown is fabricated, it is also going to be uh, a well-fitting crown with good margins. Now, the first thing to check with a bonnet is that it is clear of the occlusion. And we can do that with the shimstock material. We have the patient close down. 
Does it feel high at all? Mm -mm. Okay, now we'll double check that. Open and close. And this shim stock material slips through very easily, so we are short of the occlusion at this point. Now what we want to do is to pick up the centric stop in the soft duralay. And I want to emphasize that on this patient we have the occlusion adjusted and the occlusion is adjusted to the centric uh, relation position such that the centric relation on this patient is very close to the centric occlusion. And we are going to use the centric occlusion to mount our cast for the fabrication of the gold crown. Okay. Now we should first probably wet with the monomer. We'll wet with the monomer the acrylic so that the added acrylic will stick to it. And we don't want to add a lot of material, but we want to add an adequate amount that will pick up the centric stop in the opposing arch. Okay, I'm going to place just a little bit of Vaseline on the opposing cusp that's going to go into that acrylic so that it doesn't stick in any way. Okay, now as I said, just close up now. Close right up tight. As I said, this is in the centric occlusion position for the patient, but to ensure that the patient doesn't move, we would keep our hand on the patient's chin while she is clenching in the centric occlusion position until the acrylic sets. After the acrylic has set, we must double check the occlusion. Open. Now we may be able to see the dimple that the opposing cusp has made into the acrylic, into the softened acrylic. And we see that it's, it's now hard and it's just one cusp tip. That's all you need into that which makes a rounded uh, a sort of fossa in the acrylic. Now we would like to double check our centric stops to make sure that we haven't opened the vertical. Close. And we do that with the shim stock all the way around open to verify so that later when this is open, so that when this is mounted, you can close now, on the articulator, we can use the shim stock as a uh, guide to tell us that which teeth are in contact. So after the case is mounted, we, will, we would double check the stops on both. We should double check the mouth against the articulator. Close, open, and close. Okay. Now to further improve the stability of the cast uh, against each other, we are going to utilize the jaw relation record base with a centric occlusion uh, bite registration. And I've already performed this with the Kerr bite registration paste. I'm going to emphasize that the jaw relation record base, that is, that it, this jaw relation record base is not the same base that was used to mount the diagnostic cast. You must either fabricate a n completely new jaw relation record base from the rubber base impression at which the die uh, is, is made from, or you must relieve adequately, very adequately with an acrylic burr the inside of the jaw relation record base, the old one, and then reline it on the new cast uh, so that it will fit both the mouth and the uh, cast. The jaw relation record bases will not transfer from one cast to another. Now, this has the Kerr bite registration paste on it. Now, close up and open. Close again. You can see that the uh, occlusion fits into the 
into the curb bite registration uh, paste very nicely. Now we have this in addition to the bonnet bite. Now the occlusion can be checked at this point with shim stock also if you feel that there is question uh, it is questionable whether the uh, whether the the jaw relation record base is opening the bite but we should now take this out and we will assemble it then on the model it, it was made from. First I'm going to take out the jaw relation record base and we'll see that it fits nicely onto the model firm and we'll remove the bonnet from the patient and place it on the die and the occlusion should be stable now because we have a spot very rigid, uh, rigid back here and all the way around to this side so we're going to see if that keys now into the maxillary cast which is already mounted on the um, articulator. The cast fit very stably now together in this centric occlusion position. Now they should be, it should be, the lower cast should be mounted and then double checked uh, the stops in the initial prematurities from the mouth to the articulator. Now in addition, the, this is not, mounting is not complete until a protrusive bite would be taken and with the taking of the protrusive bite and setting of the articulator, it would complete the mounting uh, procedure for for mounting the uh, working cast against the maxillary model. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.